Hi, I'm Dennis Ferris, and today I'd like to welcome to the Limitless Energy podcast a relatively new member of the Dragonfly Energy team, Mr. Steve Carlson. Steve, welcome. Thanks, Dennis. Good to be here. So, Steve, today I'd like to focus on an industry that you've been in, very prominent in, I would say, which is the application of batteries in trucks, in work trucks, in semi trucks. Um, Maybe we can start out by talking about why batteries are important in a work truck or in a semi. Yeah, so I mean, batteries have always been used in in these vehicles because there's a lot of extra loads that that you know, like from you know different types of working loads, especially in the work vehicle or a utility vehicle. And we should we should specify this isn't the cranking battery in those trucks, but the right. actual house. Yeah, bike. it's like auxiliary batteries for running, you know, equipment, they'll have inverters, they'll have um, other items that, you know, like charging of, uh, of tools, um, different things where they've always used um, auxiliary batteries for that. Um, and so, uh, you know, obviously, switch going to lithium, it makes a big difference in weight So historically, these were lead acid? Yeah, always AGM, lead acid batteries, yeah, yep, typically. So what has changed the industry or how have the customers adapted to the new capabilities of lithium house systems? Um, yeah, so as you know, as lithium has started becoming more prominent in the last few years, um, the main thing is that that they've realized that they can eliminate um, generators. You know, so generators were a big, big part of this. It was always, you know, there was always a generator install on most of these work vehicles, and. You know what they realize that with the you know the energy density and and space savings that you get with lithium, um, they were able to eliminate the generator or at least not have to use it as much, downsize it you know into a battery charger rather than the actual source of power, uh, source of power. Why were the generators a pain point? Uh, maintenance, noise, uh, you know pollution. Um, it's it's just uh, you know it was always you know an extra um, you know nuisance for the service team, you know, for these vehicles. So in a semi, for example, you've got a driver sleeping in his cab. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the sleeper cab uh, situation is it's similar to, you know, it's their home, you know, they, they want to be comfortable. And that's, you know, in especially in the last 10 years, it's been really difficult to get enough drivers. So the, the OEMs and the fleets are working really you know, closely and, and diligently to improve the the living space for their drivers. And so the one thing that uh, has, you know, become almost standard is, is the, you know, like they call it hotel loads. So it's, you know, like the comforts of home in your, in your sleeper. So lithium batteries or just batteries in general, being able to uh, have, you know, television, microwaves, refrigerators, all these things that you would, you know, you have in a hotel room or at home, um, you can have in your truck now. So how prevalent is lithium in that situation now? Not very, um, surprisingly. Really? Yeah, so it's it's definitely something that I think is is, is about to take off. And, and the reason, obviously, is, um, you know, what you know, the biggest part of the industry is is the comfort again of the driver, and so what they've done in the past would put a second small diesel engine on the truck to be able to run all these loads, say air conditioning, refrigeration, you know, refrigerator, uh, microwaves, and, and all the power you would need. Um, but now um, they can, you know, there's a lot of a lot of uh, um, people trying to eliminate idling of any kind. Not, you know, first of all, it was the big truck engine idling. Now we have these small diesel engines that are idling. And, and so you can eliminate all of that with, um, you know, by using batteries. But the problem was um, they needed to be able to, these batteries need, needed to be able to support air conditioning for 10 hours. That's a rule in the industry. Like, you know, we need to be able to let these drivers take their, you know, period of stop be able to uh, uh, be comfortable for those 10 hours. And what happened was, you know, the lead batteries, there wasn't enough room or space for enough batteries to to allow them to, to make it that 10 hours. So they kept making the air conditioning system smaller, so they didn't really cool very well. And so, um, you know, by, by switching it to lithium, you're saving a lot of space and you actually have enough power to to make it that 10 hours, but also increase the cooling capacity. 
And so now that drivers, even in Arizona in the summertime, can be can be very comfortable with with the change to lithium. It's crazy to me that it's not more prevalent now. I mean, especially yes. this week when you see that Tesla delivered two electric semi trucks. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so they've they've gone to great length to design a system where the entire truck with a payload is propelled with lithium batteries. Yeah. But there's there's so much more lower hanging fruit here, right? It yeah, it, it is amazing, and I, I, you know, like I said, I think it's 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 uh, the really the next big change to the industry, you know, and it, it's something that can then that should happen right now, you know, for these for all these fleets that are installing secondary diesel engines and maintaining them and replacing them, they're very expensive, um, and being able to eliminate that engine, be able to you know give the drivers the comfort that they need, it's it's. You know, it's a no-brainer. So I mentioned earlier that you've been in this industry for a little while. Yeah. How, how did you get into it? Yeah, it's, you know, in your career, you never know really where you're going to go. Some people do, but, you know, sometimes you just fall into it, you know. And so um, I ended up working for an inverter company. So and one of our, you know, we were really big in, in OEM business. So RV industry, the trucking industry, um, the boating industry. And so, um, you know, I worked, um, we, we supplied inverter. I worked for a company where we supplied the inverters for the hotel loads on all four major OEMs in the U.S. So, um, so I just, yeah, just really got deep into um, the, the OEM building side of it, the, uh, the fleet side of it, um, and then even down to the owner-operator customers. So what, what's it like working primarily with OEMs? How are you selling them systems and how are you convincing them that this is the way to go? Yeah, so I mean, that's the really hard part. I mean, the, 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 the large OEMs are very, very slow in what they do. I mean, it, it makes no sense that five years ago they didn't switch to lithium, you know? But it's just difficult to get through, you know, there's so many decisions to be made and, it, it, you know, one change can make so much difference to the entire vehicle. That they, it's just it's just painful, um, you know. And so I think it is. Uh, it's it was always a challenge to get any kind of change done, but um, you know. And so typically, what you need to I, should, I don't know if I should tell people how to do it, but <laughs> um, but basically, yeah, you have to pull through the demand. You don't have to share any special sauce. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but it is funny now that with the uh, I don't know if onslaught is the right word, the onslaught of electric vehicles, you know, yep. is this really starting to turn the tide? The presence of so many electric vehicles turning the tide when it comes to application of lithium in house loads. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it does. I mean, what, you know, what, what it was difficult, as you know, um, you know, seven years ago, people didn't understand lithium, right? And it took so long to, for people to feel comfortable, like, I'm going to be sleeping with, you know, a lithium battery. And at first it was, it was a really hard sell. People weren't interested. They were very nervous about it. And so the education, I think that's happened over the, the last, you know, especially the last four years. Um, and now with electric vehicles becoming, you know, prominent, um, I think it, uh, um, you know, it's, it's finally, it's finally happening. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we, we spent a lot of our time over the years here at Dragonfly educating. Yeah. Um, educating our OEM customers and really educating our aftermarket customers. Yeah. And what we found is that it was the aftermarket that really drove the OEMs. Yep. You know, it was customers asking for this capability that they saw and they saw their friends having or whatever, you know. And so um, is there an element of that in, in the trucking industry at all? Absolutely. Yeah. It was the lesson we learned. I mean, with, uh, you know, with the company I was with before, um, you know, we were trying to improve. The, we had, you know, we had amazing products that we were trying to get into the truck industry at the OEM level. And they just were super slow moving. And so we had com competitors that would go around us, go directly to the fleets and the end customer and say, hey, look at, you don't need that old technology. Here's something new that we had to, but but they would win business that way. And then it would get pulled through the OEM. The OEM would go, their customer, this massive fleet would say, I want this now. And they're gonna give it to them. You know? And so, yeah, absolutely. It's it's the most important piece. To so how long were you in, in the inverter? business 
<laughs> I guess it was uh, 15 years, 15, 15 years. years. So yeah. at, at the, the onset of your career in inverters, where was lithium batteries on your radar? Nowhere. Not on your radar at <laughs> no. all? Nope. Not until I think it was like 2015 is when I first, you know, and I was kind of higher up in the company and, and I, I main, my main goal was, you know, I saw it coming. I you know I started, you started to see it um, happen in other areas and I'm like, this is probably going to be the next thing. And I just wanted to make sure that our products would work well with them. You know, that's where it started. And so we started to research, you know, lithium batteries. How do we, how do we charge them? How do we, you know, discharge them and how do we use them with our product? And from there, that just kept growing. It's funny because I started Dragonfly around 2011, 2012 is when I, I really started going hardcore in this, in this industry. And as we started to learn more about the interaction with inverters, we realized, well, we had to start talking to inverter company. It's not just replacing yeah. the battery, but how does the inverter charger or even just the inverter react to a, a battery, which is a little bit different, you know? And we did not have, at least early on, we did not have a very receptive audience from the manufacturers of inverters, oh. you know? We had to work, it was education, not just with the end users, but also with the manufacturers of uh, of inverters. Was there any, as you were c beginning to understand that more in in uh, the inverter company, was there any sort of resistance internally to the move towards lithium? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, they, I mean, our engineering side said this is not our core. This is not what we do. You know, and 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 so they, you know, they didn't quite see it at first. And you know, obviously. A lot of what you know comes to a business is from you know the the customer and you know from the from the sales side of the company. You know you're able to um, you know see what's happening out there and and bring back what the customers might be looking for. And so you know sometimes there's a lot of pressure, pushback on the uh, in in you know the inside of a company that's been doing the same thing for you know 20 30 years. Yeah, so, yeah a, it was it was definitely some pushback. It's a massive shift. Yeah, really. I mean, it's, it's something that happened in multiple. Lithium has created a massive shift in many industries. It's changing everything. Yeah, <laughs> anything that had a battery before. Yeah, I, anything that, especially a lead acid lead battery. battery before. But it, it's, um, it's facilitated things like cell phones and electric vehicles. But it's it's really now that those have been so prevalent for so long now it's yeah. forcing other industries like work trucks you know like semis yeah. you know to really reconsider how they do things absolutely yeah i mean it's 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 amazing we you know i was just talking to one of our other uh, other uh, co-workers t this morning and just the, the the amount of opportunity you know in there's so many areas where batteries are being used that they haven't even even looked at it yet and it's it's just yeah it's it's, it's exciting right now yeah. so this is not it's not trivial right getting into gaining traction there's there's probably still some barriers to that yeah um and you noted to education in the past do you think there's a lot more educating to be done oh absolutely i mean you know not to to uh <laughs> um but i mean just seeing what you know what you guys were able to do, you know, in the RV industry, especially, especially through the end customer, with the education and the, and, you know, support that you gave to to that, you know, to that industry, uh, it changed everything. I mean, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't say RV was the leader in adopting lithium until the customers demanded it, you know, and, and that was that came from people like you know like like dragonfly that that really you know helped to educate the customers and so in these other markets these you know commercial and work you know markets it's that's that's what that's what it needs it needs a lot of education um you know there's there's associations that you know create rules for industries you know and just you know like the rv industry has too and they haven't even approached lithium as a subject yet as you know because you know they make rules for safety and, and convenience and things and so um you know it's just amazing that the lack of education so far mm -hmm. now we see the same thing in a lot of different industries where based on our experience we can come in and say look we know this is a better product we can offer you a better product now and there's just a lot of resistance even to 
having the conversation, yeah. you know. Um, and in a lot of these industries, there are regulations and there are uh, industry groups that create standards. And yep. I would imagine there are similar regulations that exist in, in trucking. There is. Yep. So what, what needs to change there, do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a uh, it's actually a, a a good program the way they they handle it. It's very similar to you know to the RV and marine industry where they do have a, you know these groups that help to create standards for the industry, and um, really it's just it's really just being um, you know being proactive and and maybe aggressive on the fact that you know this is something that needs to be discussed and and we need to put some standards in place you know so for safety and for you know for you know so that it's you know simple for everyone to understand and work mm -hmm. so let me ask you Steve what personally drives you why are you in in this business how'd you get into inverters oh yeah again well I it was it's a long story but uh, basically uh, I was working for a manufacturer's representative uh, company. We rep uh, a bunch of companies in the marine and, and RV industry, and and this inverter company happened to be one that we represented. And you know, and I, you know, I had I had you know started in electrical engineering at school, so I had some interest there and stuff. But um, but that was kind of my. I would say it's probably my weakest area when I was younger. I, could, I understood how things were built and and all that kind of stuff, but the electricity just kind of I never quite got it, you know. And so um, going to work for an inverter company, it uh, I you know really um, you know that was just such an eye-opening thing and you know exciting to to understand how it all worked. And as you know, as that grew and as we moved from you know all this power conversion part of what what our company did to you know to working with lithium, you know, we just saw the possibilities of what you know what lithium brings to that that piece. You know, being able to eliminate idling of all vehicles. You know that are, you know as as uh, idling you know especially in the work truck you know markets is to you know provide power when you know when you're doing your work and all of that can be eliminated now and so being able to um, you know eliminate that you know that carbon footprint of these vehicles idling all over the world you know it just was such an exciting um, thing for me that so it's just, that which is what really drove me for the last you know seven eight years is is just like not only is it super cool <laughs> but it's like helping the world too you know so. mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um, so you actually said you you studied electrical engineering yeah when I when I first went to to college I got into the Institute Institute of Technology at the University of Minnesota and uh, and uh, my my math teacher, my calc teacher in high school was like connected, and we, you know, we did all college calc courses in high school and stuff, and so just kind of went that direction. But uh, uh -huh. yeah, so so you were originally in Minneapolis. Yep, yep, still. <laughs> right, born and raised. Born and raised. Yep, and still in Minneapolis. Yeah, yep, the family's you know, all there and stuff. So my wife does not want to be there, but <laughs> really, <laughs> she doesn't like the cold. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're we're sitting in Reno here today, and it's about twenty degrees outside. So yeah. it's probably not, a little it's less. Not great here <laughs> <laughs> in that regard. Yeah, we do have mountains here, though. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, you know, it 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 is great to have you on the team, Steve. I do want to say that. Um, oh, it's great to be here. Thank and you. Uh, I I do think that this market is incredibly important. I think for for the reasons that we discussed. Uh, I think it's an overlooked market. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is a problem with with idling. I think there's a problem with how folks have have approached yeah. this market. And you know, again, the fact that the the propulsion, the the transportation aspect of it is the focus of the electrification. It's like they're leapfrogging the easy step. Yeah. You know. Yep. The work that you're doing is, is really important. Uh, it's in, certainly important to Dragonfly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just great having you on the podcast. So thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. I'd like to thank my guest today, Steve Carlson. Make sure to subscribe to the Limitless Energy podcast on any of your favorite podcast platforms.